The following program is sponsored by Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County and the generous gifts of these contributors. Thank you for joining us for our 44th season of Mosaic. I'm your host, Susan Schulman Pertnoy. Mosaic is Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County's weekly news magazine, exploring the most critical issues facing Jews here and around the world. Today, we're exploring a rescue mission our Federation has supported for almost 40 years, the migration of at-risk Ethiopian Jews to Israel. We'll talk to members of our community who have been on the ground in Ethiopia recently, as well as one involved in the original Operation Moses airlift in the 1980s. That's coming up next on Mosaic. We're so proud to celebrate our community visionaries donors who contribute one million dollars or more, serving as an inspiration for all of Jewish Palm Beach. You have the power to do good that goes everywhere. From here to Israel, to Ukraine, to 70 countries around the world, from educational to life-changing experiences, from lonely to connected, from afraid to strong. But that good goes beyond our city. Your gift drives connections and awakens identity. From devastation to reimagination, from tragedy to support, your gift transforms leaders from being a solo visionary into being a catalyst for change. And while you're watching this, your gift is making its way from North America to impacting people around the world. Did you know that you can now enjoy Mosaic on the go? Listen to the Mosaic podcast by scanning the QR code on the screen or find it wherever you listen to podcasts. Today we're talking about the immigration of Jews to Israel, specifically those who were rescued from the African nation of Ethiopia. And joining us to discuss this is Melissa Arden, who's Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County's Vice President of Strategy and Planning. Melissa, welcome to Mosaic. Thank you, Susan. So glad to be here. Before we get started with our topic today, tell us about what your position entails. Thank you. Um, as Vice President of Community Strategy and Planning here at Federation, my job is to assess the needs of the Jewish community, not only here in Palm Beach, but in Israel and around the world, work with our partners to address those needs and form relationships and collaborations in order to best address those needs. That's quite a position. <laughs> and you do a great job at it. Thank you so much. For those who don't understand the Ethiopian plight, can you give us some background information on it? Absolutely. Um, since the early 80s, um, we, Israel, with the support of the Jewish community around the world, has brought over 95,000 Ethiopian, Ethiopians to Israel for Aliyah. This started back in the 80s with Operation Moses and we have a very special guest I know who's going to talk about that. Um, and since the mid-80s, there have been clandestine um, operations in order to bring these, uh, the Jewish community from Gondar, which is called Beta Israel, over to Israel. Why, did, why was there such a need to rescue them? Do you, can you speak about that? Absolutely. As part of our um, mission and our um, 
charging orders as a Jewish community is to ensure that where there's a Jew in the world that we're taking care of them. And that when we discovered that there was a Jewish community in Ethiopia, it was our um, responsibility to ensure their safety um, and their, um, to bring them to Israel to ensure that they are, you know, have a, a successful life. What, are, what were some of the challenges of getting them to Israel? Back in the 80s, uh, the challenges were working with governments um, under the radar, the Jewish community working under the radar in order to um, raise the funds, the significant funds that it takes in order to bring this community over to Israel. Um, so it's been decades and decades of support of raising the funds, of working with not only the Israeli government, but also the governments of Ethiopia in order to get these people to safety. And I know the culture is so different. What is it? What are some of the challenges that Israel has in absorbing this group? So the challenges have changed over time. Um, it, during the first wave, in uh, first two waves in Moses and Solomon. Um, the folks that were coming from Ethiopia, the culture was completely different. Um, oftentimes, uh, they didn't have the modern luxuries that we have, such as um, t uh, plumbing and electricity. So those first waves were incredibly difficult for those for those new olim, which is immigrants to Israel, to really integrate into society. It was a completely different world for them. Now. We, the new Olim that are coming from Ethiopia, it's different, you know, many have iPhones. Um, unfortunately, many still live in, um, in areas that are not, that, that don't have modern luxuries, but it's, many have education, and so it's a little bit different, but also very similar challenges in, in integration. So what, what services do we provide? Can you talk about that? Once they're in Israel, they have um, about two years worth of absorption services. That includes learning Hebrew, that includes education, um, also vocational conversion in order for these folks to really integrate fully into society and be successful. And be successful. Yes. That's, that's very important. Why is, it, why is our federation involved in this? Why, why do we participate? We participate because it is our, um, you know, as a, a rabbi over 2,000 years ago s said that we are responsible, all Jews are responsible for one another. And so when there is a Jewish person in need anywhere in the world, we need to make sure that that, that community, that person is taken care of. And that is really woven into the thread of our, our own federations. Um, mission, and that's why we're ensuring that these these folks get to Israel. It's a beautiful sentiment. Um, talk about the agencies that we support that are involved in helping the Ethiopians. Absolutely. So um, the Jewish Agency for Israel is really at the forefront of ensuring that the um, Aliyah and absorption is taking place. So everything from working with the community in Ethiopia to then fully bringing them over to Israel, and then the absorption services. They're also working with, um, of course, the Israeli government in providing these services. It's remarkable the work that these NGOs do, because in order to be successful, you have to have the support, because Absolutely. they're in such a deficit. Not only that, it, it's one thing to rescue, to go over to Ethiopia and um, bring these Olim to Israel. But once they're in Israel, they are, there's so many services that are required. And I'm so proud of our federation to be supporting these efforts and for the Jewish agency um, to be supporting these efforts as well, because it's truly from, from A to Z, really ensuring that um, they're set up for a successful life in Israel. On that note, we have to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this brief message. The rescue of Ethiopian Jews is an important mission that's reaching our local community members in a very profound way. We'll hear from one who recently returned from Ethiopia. His thoughts are next on Mosaic.
Looking to connect with the vibrant Jewish community of the Palm Beaches? Find the ways that are most meaningful to you. Visit jewishpb.org slash upcoming to explore your options. Joining the conversation now is Mark Levy. He just participated in the most recent operation to rescue Ethiopian Jews called Operation Zor Israel. Mark is also a former board chair of our Jewish Federation and has been a long-term board chair and continues to be, and excuse me, not board chair, board member of the Jewish Agency for Israel. Mark, welcome to Mosaic. Thank you so much, Susan. And it's an honor to be here and especially to talk about uh, Operation Zor. What possessed you to be a part of this Operation Zor? Uh, Susan, we, I have been involved in Jewish Federation and Jewish Agency for so many years and have uh, watched and participated in, in helping to fund uh, the rescue of the Ethiopian uh, Jewish community uh, since I first came to this, this area after graduating school. And uh, I wanted to be there uh, on the ground and see it for myself. And so I asked, and uh, they said, we'd love to have you. And uh, so I was able to participate in an experience where we went to Ethiopia, uh, met with uh, the Ethiopian uh, community, uh, some of the leaders from Israel who had been participating for the last 40 years. and. Uh, and flew back with uh, 208 Olim on an airplane and ar arrived in Israel and then spent the next day l seeing how the absorption process was working. Let's backpedal a little. Tell us about that plane ride. I can't even imagine the emotional content of what was going on with all the people in the, uh, for that experience. I, uh, I can say that I've been on a lot of mission, Jew, missions for the Jewish uh, Federation and Jewish Agency uh, over my lifetime, but I don't think I had a more profound emotional e experience than that. Uh, uh, as you could see on the, uh, the screen, as the airplane entered uh, Israel airspace, they let the, the uh, Olim children, parents, let out a, a applause and it was, it was an overwhelming emotional response and it was really incredible. Uh, I think it's important to understand that these Ethiopian Olim that are coming now are reunifying with family members that they have not seen sometimes six to 14 years. Uh, we spoke with one uh, man who was going to see his sister for the first time in 12 years so these are people who, uh, who their, their strong desire to go to Israel and to become, to become Israeli and to go to Jerusalem, which has been the dream of the Ethiopian people for thousands of years, is also a reunification of their families. And which, if we think about how important that would be, if it was you or I, what, oh, a, great, of what, what a great and wonderful uh, um, program that uh, the Jewish Agency, our Federation, and uh, the Government of Israel partnering together is accomplishing. Melissa, I know you were also privileged to be on an Operation Zor Israel. Can you tell us about how it was for you um, to be on the plane? Absolutely, and I, I mirror what Mark said. It was the so emotional and it was the pinnacle of my career to see the impact that our federation is making. Um, on the plane, you could just feel every emotion. It was excitement. It was, uh, un people were unsure of what was to come. It was um, everything you could ever imagine. And I remember as the flight took off, um, the woman sitting next to me, we just instinctually grabbed each other's hands and knowing and just feeling of what was to come for them and the opportunities that they had. And what was amazing was as the plan was landing, we um, sang the Shechech which is being grateful for this day, and then also Am Yisrael Chai, 
which means um, the people of Israel live. And it was just an incredible sentiment um, as this plane landed in Israel. Mark, how prideful is it for you to have witnessed this? Oh, I, I'm proud to have been able to participate personally, uh, just because what an opportunity to, and, and, and I think I, I wanna echo what Melissa said, you have to realize even though where they're coming from is very difficult circumstances. I mean, the poorest of the poor, uh, the, the, the crudest of the crudest, living conditions, health, uh, food, deprivation, and so forth, they're still leaving everything they know and everything they've ever lived, learned, to go to a place that's completely different and, and it's, it's a very daunting uh, you know, feeling for them. But at the same time, it's also a joyful feeling. And their, their excitement and their hope was contagious. And I felt it in all of us, 40 leaders from around the country who were on that, on that flight, uh, all felt it and we all experienced it with them and we experienced it together. And that's community and that's the Jewish community at work. Yes, and that's the Jewish agency at work. Yes. And that has to be remarkable to, to see it in action firsthand. Well, it's, it's, uh, it was, as I said, the most impactful an emotional mission I've ever experienced. And I'm not a person who tends to get overly emotional, but this time I was, uh, there, were, there, were, there, were, there were a few tears. And uh, I, I, I just really was, was, was blown away by the, the feelings and the experience. Well, thank you both for joining us. Thank Absolutely, you. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. We'll be right back after this brief message. The fascinating history of Ethiopian Aliyah goes back decades. Stay with us to hear a first-hand account of the original airlift, Operation Moses. That's up next on Mosaic. Did you know that you can now enjoy Mosaic on the go? Listen to the Mosaic podcast by scanning the QR code on the screen or find it wherever you listen to podcasts. We're so proud to celebrate our community visionaries donors who contribute $1 million or more, serving as an inspiration for all of Jewish Palm Beach. Joining us now is a very special guest. He was also a former board chair of our Jewish Federation and a member of the board of the Jewish Agency for many years. As, 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 as a matter of fact, he was the chair of the Aliyah Department, which for those of you that don't know what that means, it means the Immigration Department. Not only that, he was on the first operation to rescue Jews from Ethiopia called Operation Moses in 1984, almost 40 years ago. Alan Shulman, who is not only a famous man, but he's also my father. Oh my, what a pleasure for me to be here. <laughs> Welcome to Mosaic Dad. And we have a family conversation. It is a really special position that you, you've experienced. Thank you. Tell us a little bit of the history of the okay. operation. The operation, Operation Moses, took place in November 1984. Plans for it were many years before that including a period of time when the Israeli rabbinate made a decision that the Jews of Ethiopia, who are members of a community called B'nai Israel, were entitled to return to Israel as Jews. Going back to the biblical period, they studied and they lived biblical Judaism, and they were to be accepted as full Jews. And the history is quite simple. There was a raging, raging famine throughout that period, throughout that period, throughout that region, particularly in the Gondor region of Ethiopia. 
and people were scrambling to leave their homes to find a refuge. And there was a huge refuge camp in the Sudan, which, by the way, was a Muslim country, not particularly friendly to Jews and not particularly friendly to the state of Israel. Nonetheless, Jews started to make this trek. Many, it was very dangerous. There were robbers and thieves on the road. It's over desert, desert. Walking. Very, very walking. Well, there were no buses. There were certainly no planes. And no, no Ubers and no lifts either, okay. So anyway, um, many people died on the way. There was an operation that the Jewish agency and together with the Israeli government had been working on to try to rescue. There were approximately, approximately 7,500 of these people in the, in the Sudan camp. This was a clandestine operation where groups of, uh, of Ethiopians were put in, in buses, open, sometimes open camps, and taken into the desert where a plane would be waiting for them. That plane could not fly directly to Israel. It had to fly to, Paris, to France first and then to Israel because the airspace would be recognized by the Sudanese government. It was a very, very complicated, very dangerous, very dangerous operation. Human lives were desperately at risk here. But when the plane finally arrived and they put the staircase up, I was the first one that was given the privilege of walking through that door. You can just imagine. I can't. You, you can have to imagine. describe this. It was nothing but schmatas. Clothing. People were dressed in multicolored outfits. Quiet, not a sound. There were many children. Not a sound. Very quiet. And then Marty followed me, and we started to carry some of these people, helping them to come down the staircase, coming down the ramp. And there were two Kesses. Kess was a rabbi in Ethiopia. And the first thing they did when they got off the plane, they bowed down and they kissed the ground, which just, you can just blow you away, okay? There was a gentleman who worked for the Jewish agency by the name of Mika Feldman. Mika Feldman was a refugee from Germany who came to Israel as a boy and eventually he became an employee of the Jewish agency. He spoke Amharic, the language of Ethiopia, and he spoke it fluently. It was incredible. So much so that he, he, he knew everybody coming in and off the plane all the time. And so we had a choice. We could drive in a private car to, to meet the bus in Ethiopia, we could be on the bus and go with the people to Ashdod. And I decided I wanted to go on the bus, and Mika went with me. He and I were on one bus, and Elton and, uh, and Marty Stein were on a second bus. It was also interesting, quiet, nothing, nothing at all. And then about maybe two miles before we reached the absorption center in Ashdod, the bus pulled off to the side of the road, stopped, and opened up the door, and I saw Mika was talking to them that they could go outside. I said, what is going on here? He said, well, we have to give these people an opportunity to relieve themselves. Giving them access to the bathrooms in the absorption center would mean nothing to them. They would have no idea what to do with that kind of equipment, plumbing. Never had seen it before in their lives. So we got back on the bus. And we go to Ashdod, and they were met by a series of doctors and nurses. And everybody was seated at a long table. I have, I'm not a very good photographer, but fortunately I had brought along with me a small camera, and I started to shoot pictures. I wound up having the only pictures that exist of that first Aliyah from Ethiopia. Now, fast forward 25 years after this operation. 25 years after this operation, the Council, the, the Committee for Commission for Jewish Education had put together an Ethiopian curriculum and spread it around our local federation. As a result of that, the commission held a, uh, a fundraiser at Cafe Baloo, and I had these pictures blown up, and I asked Mika to choose which families we would invite to this celebration, and it took place during a Board of Governors meeting. And I presented each family 
with a complete set of these pictures. What a beautiful sentiment. And it sentiment. was a moment of sheer delight mm -hmm. because people were looking at themselves as they looked 25 years earlier. Children were sitting on their mother's laps and now they were adults and they had never seen a picture of themselves as a child. So it was an extraordinary experience. But let's talk for a moment about the clandestine nature of the operation. Because r lives were at risk. It was Jewish aid, the Jewish agency's responsibility and the American Jewish community's responsibility to raise the necessary funds, which we calculated to be $60 million. We raised $62 million in 60 days. Wow. All of the media in the United States had agreed not to break this story. The New York Times, the Washington Post, all of these papers agreed not to break this story. Unfortunately, a rogue reporter from Washington, D.C. heard about, the, heard about the, uh, the mission and broke the story. Overnight, it stopped. Stopped leaving approximately 1,500 Ethiopians left in the camp in the Sudan. They were eventually flown out and rescued by President George W. Bush, who stepped into the picture, made a deal with the Sudanese government, sent American aircraft in, put the 1,500 people in aircraft, and flew him to Israel. Wow, what, what a story. What, Dad, yes. what a memory for you. Oh, what well, an experience. As I tell it, I swell up again with, you know, appreciation for the fact that I had the opportunity to participate at that level. It was an extraordinary experience. Thank you so much for taking the I time. I tried to give you a lot. Uh, you in did, a but short I, of I time. can't tell you <laughs> what a, a special opportunity this has been to listen to you recount such an extraordinary, extraordinary experience. Uh, thank you. Susan. Thank you for appreciate sharing, Dad. Appreciate that. My pleasure. program is sponsored by Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County.